going on YouTube? Today we're talking about Rogue CB4 cambered barbell. And I'll admit, this is a bar that I regretted buying when I first ordered it. And having used it, it's changed my mind. So stay tuned for talking about it. Hey, welcome back, and today we're talking about the Rogue CB4 cambered barbell. And this thing is an absolute beast. Um, so why did I buy it? Well, I kind of bought it as an impulse buy, I'll be honest. And it was in the boneyard, which it's still in the boneyard today. And in the details, it said, in brand new condition. Now, I was a little bit concerned because um, Brandon had ordered a new one, not even a, a boneyard one, and his sleeves, one of his sleeves was higher than the other one. So they had kind of messed up uh, a few in the production and Rogue, in their great customer service, replaced Brandon's bar. But I was a little bit concerned about that ordering from the boneyard. Well, I lucked out, no issues like that with my bar at all. Now, why are they in the boneyard? Well, I can't speak for Rogue, obviously I don't know, but I can say that a large run of these had a very poor finish or, or basically Cerakote finish or even just the way that the metal was finished. And I think that's why these ended up in the boneyard. And I'll show you in some pictures, the actual finish of the bar outside of the knurling is very, um, it's just not smooth. There's a lot of indentations, a lot of imperfections in it. It doesn't look all that good. So I believe that's why they marked these down, I think around $80 and listed them in the boneyard for $420. Um, now, this is a bar that when I first initially bought impulsively, I was a little concerned that this is probably a waste of money. And I really thought, oh, this is gonna be one of those reviews where I'm telling you not to buy it. Well, after using this bar now for, I don't know how long, you know, a few weeks or three, four weeks, um, I really like it. And I've really grown to like using this bar. It's a, actually a lot better bar than I was expecting in terms of the ergodynamics and the feel of the bar. We'll talk about squats first. So I'm recovering from a torn shoulder. I cannot squat on a straight bar, so I've been using my rep SSB quite a bit. This came in the gym, started to use this, and it does help alleviate shoulder pressure. I can definitely feel the difference. It is 60 pounds, so it's gonna be heavier than a normal uh, straight bar bell, but it feels really good on squats. It's a little bit different in terms of the actual mechanics of your squat. It's gonna move the weight a little bit differently, but it does feel really good and I really like that. So what other uses do you have? So you, you can, you, obviously the main purpose is for squats, but I have seen people using it on bench and for deadlifts. I haven't seen any shoulder press stuff, but it's possible. So I have tried it out on bench. It does feel really good. And a part of that is due to the specs of the bar itself. So the diameter of the bar is 38 millimeters. This thing is super fat. It's 38 mils. I really like a fatter bar on bench press. The cambered por portion of it allows you to get a little bit better range of motion. So for bench, it's actually a really good bar to have. And I really like that feature and that you know, ability to use it for that. Um, the other thing about using it for squats because it is so stiff and so thick, there is no bounce at all. So when you rack it, if you're going heavy, you're gonna feel this thing is rock solid. The sleeves are turned up ever so slightly. I measured them. It's very, very small, but that's similar to how Kabuki's uh, duffalo bar is set up. The sleeves have a bit of a built-in angle to keep the plates on. I don't think it's a big deal once you've got some collars on there, it's not gonna be a problem. The knurling on this bar is aggressive. It is seriously aggressive and feels great. I really like the, the knurling on it. The portion in the middle here with the center uh, mark is great for your back and it stays on there for squats. It's not going anywhere. And again, this was really designed in conjunction with Westside Barbell 
for the, the strongman games for Rogue, and they had some huge, strongest dudes in the world using this bar, and it was pretty impressive. So, one other thing that they improved upon over, say, the Kabuki Duffalo bar is Rogue elongated the camber. So they actually stretched the camber out, I can't remember if it's 10 inches or eight inches further, but what that does is that prevents it from wanting to roll on you. If you look at the duffalo bar, it ends here and then goes, goes straight or flat. In that flat section, that's what creates that instability of it wanting to roll. Rogue fixed that. I'm using it with some rep J cups right now and it works great. I will say this, and this is just a warning or caveat to anybody with roller, roller J cups, these cambered bars, they will want to spin on you, or worse, especially this one, because it has the camber where it hits the J cup, it will want to flip. So if I put this down here, and I'll show you what I'm kind of talking about on my ghost rollers, you start going this way and you have weight on that side still, so you've just unracked this side and you're going around to unrack that side. This will slide down and this side, I've had it happen to me, will want to come up out of the J-cup and flip over. So just be careful. I have a set of inserts for my Irwin rollers on order from Irwin Fitness and I'll be using those primarily with this bar or these rep J-cups here. So um, the finish on this is actually two different finishes and the actual uh, sh uh, shaft is uh, cer black Cerakote, obviously, and they use a proprietary black finish on the sleeves. There has been some complaints on tighter fitting plates not slipping over the sleeves. I, hadn't, I haven't had any issues with that. Rogue lists it as a, uh, you know, might happen on the website, but in measuring these sleeves, they actually come in under 50 mil millimeters, which puts them basically under the industry standard. So I can't see how that could happen uh, unless you got a bad set of sleeves or your plates were made with a tolerance that's too tight. So um, I know that's gonna come up as a question. Retail on this is 495, we covered it, and Boneyard 420. Overall in closing, this is a bar that you do not need to have in your gym. It's a nice, maybe must, have, you know, it, it's a nice, if you can have, or maybe add to your barbell collection, but this by no means is a must purchase. Um, but I am happy with it. And again, for $420, it's very expensive, but the overall quality of the knurling, the sleeves, I really like the camber of it and the versatility of using it for bench, using it for squats and also deadlifts. And I, I didn't touch on deadlifts, but Using this for deadlifts is almost like you're, you're doing a rack pull with it. It's just putting the, the handle a little bit higher up and taking some pressure off the wrist by giving you a little bit of angle there. Um, but it does feel really good. And for, for me, this bar will be primarily used for those three movements. So if you got any questions or anything else that you want me to add to this, let me know in the comments below. I appreciate everybody following, watching, and again, Watch all the reviews you can. This is just my opinion. The best thing to do and what I do as well, you know, is whenever you're buying something is check out the other reviewers, see what they say about the bar, try to pick up something from everybody, and then that way you can make a good informed decision. I'm not an affiliate for Rogue, but you know, it's still a nice product. So have a good one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.